Underdog Fantasy is the best and easiest place to play fantasy sports and their pick'em game. Sign up now with code Poodle and you'll double your first deposit up to $100 in bonus cash when you make your first deposit of $10 or more. It's simple. Deposit $100, get $100 free. Good luck and have fun. Hey, what's going on, everybody? It's Poodle back with another Madden 24 franchise mode video. And today we're going to be going over the fastest ways to develop players in Madden 24. Now, before we get into the video, guys, if you haven't already, check out Underdog Fantasy down below. My link will be down there. And if you use it, you can get your first deposit matched up to $100. Have fun and good luck. Also, make sure to give this video a big thumbs up. Comment down below your best methods to build players in Madden 24. And if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel as we'll be having franchise videos all year long. All right, so the first thing is here, as you see, we're in week one, start of a franchise. It even dates into preseason. There are so many ways to build a player. I speak from experience. I was in a league last year where some teams competitive users had 88 overall teams and some other competitive users had 98 overall teams how do you get a 10 xp difference if both users are good they both get stats they both play the game well the difference is how you develop your how you develop your players your development strategy is so important let's start with the the basics the most basic thing is going to be weekly training let's start with weekly strategy like I said, I recommend turning off practice injuries as that will make this a bit easier to do because practice injuries are annoying, they're frustrating, they can hurt a player's development, and honestly, it's too random. I don't believe in such level of randomness in a game that we're trying to play for fun, right? But that, that's, my, that's my personal opinion. First thing you want to do is the game plan itself doesn't matter so much for XP. That matters more for playing, so we're going to ignore that. You're going to want to go over to player health. This is the first key thing. So there's full pads on the top for intensity and then there's also roster starters split and backup so a few things you do want to note here full pads give you the most xp most fatigue loss half pads give you the least xp but less fatigue now what my recommendation is the first 12 to 14 weeks of the season go full pads don't worry about fatigue the only time you may want to differ off of that is if you're playing a competitive opponent and your players are tired but this video is how to develop players the fastest not how to beat people so practice intensity leave it on 100 now, this is so important. People just do all starters or all backups or split. Do not split. Splitting essentially means you're giving two players half XP. You're pretty much capping both their potential. Always go starters and ba or backups, and I'll explain why. So, a thing to note here, if you go down to cornerback, starters are two out of two starters. Get the XP boost. Backups get more. So, let's just say you have like two or three training camp uh, style practice squad rookies on the squad, and you're two your two top corners are like Jalen Ramsey and Trey White like they're older you don't you can't really build them at that point if you go back up you're actually giving the entire rest of the cornerback depth chart XP so keep that in mind that's a great way to just build up some backup players in the meantime uh if you have three good buildable corners you can't get all of them in there you can put them as backups you can build them that way but make sure that you're doing either starters or backup never do split so make sure you look through this too because let's just say it's preseason week one you're doing training camp you do all starters you skip through but you don't realize that cornerback three is cj henderson that you want to build and now you're actually not building him or at left out at middle linebacker that guy smith is actually an 88 speed rookie or i think a second year linebacker who's actually pretty solid for madden to build you're not you're not giving him xp you're giving it to shaq thompson so make sure you are going ahead and doing backups there to make sure you're giving it to the right people because if you don't you end up skipping it why is this important if we go in here, we skip over to player health for offense. You do the same thing here. You can go through quarterback, halfback. Same thing applies. Make sure you're doing this right. This is such a key part of building your team. And then if you go to here, focus players. One of the key things you do want to do is make sure that you eventually go down the coaching path and get your extra focus player. If you see here below Bryce Young, it says unlock one player for each tier of the after school tutoring head coach talent. So go to your head, go to your head coach build up your franchise points as quickly as possible or use a current coach that either has it already or has the points to do it pretty quickly and unlock that one as quickly as possible that is going to hinder your development if you do not have that opening those three allow you to add three more focus players if you press x on a focus player you can change them never go with players that are older than 25 in my opinion unless you really are hell-bent on developing them it's kind of wasteful xp is harder go with the young guys i recommend 24 or younger on anyone you put here preferably 23 jc horn's a guy that i might want to build also, if it's a position that's easy to build, like once Bryce Young's an 87 overall, you might not want to have him there because he's a quarterback. You're going to get stats with him no matter what. You want to put guys there that are harder to build. So for instance, one guy that I would focus on for me would be uh, Ika McQuanu, rookie from last year. He's a 79 superstar, going to be able to be built rather quickly if you do this method. If you end up putting him just as a left tackle that just plays, it's going to be harder because they don't catch balls. You know, they don't score touchdowns like that. Uh, so keep that in mind. Another thing is that left tackles and like tackles don't play mini games. So that also is kind of annoying to waste a spot, but 
definitely make sure you're you're setting your focus players every week and you're doing that and to maximize getting the focus players and all that stuff quickly make sure to go through weekly game plan and pick the right things to get franchise points i will go through all of that in another video but uh as we look on here the next part of building your player is the newest thing added which is actually mini games so i have completed two on the other ones as i was showing the best mini games to play if you click here and you change to a player that you can play miles sanders has a mini game available you click on him this year they added mini games and this is such a huge xp boost i cannot even explain it 750 per mini game a week that gets on gold there's silver and there's bronze i have another video going over this if you haven't watched it make sure to check that out but key thing here bronze is 300 gold 750 clearly you want gold what if you what if you fail right and you get bronze that's a lot of xp loss there's a restart feature you can play the mini game as many times as you want until you get gold i cannot stress this enough 750 across three preseason games is 2250 xp then 750 across the extra 17 weeks you can practice is going to be times 20 is 15,000 xp per season and there's also playoffs but i'm gonna keep playoffs out of it because you may not make playoffs correct so 15,000, let's say you play an eight, an eight year long cycle. That is 120,000 XP. That is the difference between a player who's, you know, 26, 27 being a 91 overall or a 99 overall. That is a huge XP difference. Now let's, let's do it with bronze. Bronze times 20 games a year, guaranteed. And then you times that, minus injuries, of course, you times that by eight, you're looking at 48,000. You are essentially getting one third. That means that a player that did this may only have went from a 90 to a 93. A player that got it all gold with restarts gets a 99. I cannot stress enough. Absolutely play these and restart them until you get gold. Failing to get gold is pretty much putting yourself behind the competition. This is officially like a skill gap way. Something that like if you want to put more time into, similar to when you play those apps where the more time you put in, the more you build your city. If you put in the time, you can literally build your team up better than other people. And why is this important? You know, there's those top six, seven people in the league that stat pad that are great, that always have a lead. Then there's the guys who are the mid tier users that can't stat pad and their players always fall behind. This is a way for those guys to try to keep up with a pretty good XP bonus. This is honestly better than even doing well with them in games sometimes. So those are the first two aspects to building your players. Next thing, age. Keep in mind age. People don't sometimes look at age. Age plays a big difference in your XP bar. I'm going to go into the team now to show you how that works. So there's two things to take into account. It's age and dev trait. These play hand in hand. Getting a dev trait as early as possible is always going to maximize your gain. So let's start with that one actually. Dev trait here. Brian Burns at 25 years old at 87 overall is going to only take 9,000 XP points to get to his next spot. That is super cheap for a guy of that overall. That pretty much means you can get an upgrade every few weeks. Now you compare him to a guy like Derek Brown, who's also 25 at an 84 overall, no dev traits, and a low overall. He's 11K. So two things to note here. He's about 3,000 to 2,000 more. He's three overalls less. It takes more XP the higher overall. So Brian Bird should be more. But that dev trait superstar difference makes a difference, and they're the same age. So that dev trait alone pretty much means that they're at least a 3 to 4K difference, because if Derek Brown was actually an 87 overall, like Brian Burns is, he would be closer to the 12 to 13K spot. So there's about a 5K difference just in dev trait. First thing to keep in mind, I think the multiplier is like 25%, 50%, 75%, something like that. Now, if you keep it on moving on down, you go to a guy like DJ Chark. DJ Chark is a 26-year-old, only one year difference than um, Brian Burns, but he's a 77 overall, right? He should be much cheaper. He is almost 13,000 XP to build up, which essentially means his career is over at 26 years old. So dev traits and age go hand in hand. Focus on that, where this applies. When you're in the draft, you're looking at two receivers. They look pretty similar. One receiver has a few better rates. Now, the one receiver that clearly has some better stats is 23 or 24 years old in the draft. The other receiver looks slightly worse, but he's 21 years old. Always draft a 21-year-old. A 21-year-old to 22-year-old are the players that have the potential to easily get to 99 overall. You pretty much have four to like four prime years till age 25 to build the hell out of that guy. A guy at 23, 24, especially like a like a, let's say a 71 overall edge rusher at 23, 24 out of the draft, you have like one season one season to win rookie of the year get a dev chart get get a get a dev upgrade get anything relevant and if you don't get anything relevant at that year you pretty much failed the guy it is too risky to waste your draft picks like that in the draft you always want to target 21 to 22 year olds unless you see a generational guy that's like 23 but he's clearly generational so make sure you're factoring an age into your building process one thing i do do it pretty much is like if you're above age 24 and you're not above an 80 overall or and star dev you're pretty much not gonna be able to be built People might argue me on that, but like Herndon Hooker or Hendon Hooker, Lions quarterback starts at age like 24, 25. 
at normal depth he's done he's cooked he's not buildable and i know it sounds weird to say that but players start regressing anywhere after age 28 and their xp bar as you can see here at age 26 normal dev is too high 12k is exceptionally high to ever get this guy in the 90 overalls you'd be looking at 20k plus at a normal dev unrealistic but i would not i would not ever forget to factor in age uh let's just say a 21 year old versus 22 uh, versus 24 year old the difference at the same overall point might be 3k that means that all your practice points in those mini games are going to that gap if you just have a 21 year old you can start like doubling your upgrades at that point so age and dev the uh, dev trait have to be taken into account here so make sure you are taking that into account when you do go and build your team failure to take that into account may result in you trying to build dj chart because he's tall and fast and being stuck with an 82 overall normal dev at 28 years old for the remainder of franchise by the time you even get him up to the 82 right do not make that mistake another key aspect of building your team and this one that was incorporated last year is mentors if you don't know what mentors are pretty much they're veteran players that get a tag on them known as the mentor tag and these players these look right there see where it says player tags uh, under the Marcus Joyner's name next to experience nine player tag bridge player if you read the player tag you'll know if they're a mentor so right here Julio Jones is a bridge player and a mentor uh let's see if we keep scrolling down you'll see mentors right here Al Woods mentor T.Y. Hilton mentor so these mentors if you if you roster them on your team anyone at that position group on your team will get a boost in, tra in uh, practice training so when you guys do the weekly strategy so if you get T.Y. Hilton for instance he's a he's a half mentor right there if you put him on your roster and I'm the Panthers right now, DJ Chark, Jonathan Mingo, etc. will actually get an XP boost from training weekly because he will Hilton's on the team. You can have more than one. I believe there is a cap. I don't know the exact number, but I know at a point it stops like it's like uh, minute diminishing gains. There's a point where it stops going up, but you can have multiple. So strategy last year was having like three backup quarterbacks on the squad that all had the mentor tag right here alone. The first three are all mentors, first four, first five. There's so many of them. The ways to pick them up in a league, if there's a weekly pickup, you can only get one. Or in the free agency, when everyone's focusing on all the flashy players, you can just go ahead and get one of these guys. So make sure you are rostering these. If you follow, you know, this plus everything else are like incremental little XP points to get on your players. Keep up building them. So make sure you do focus on the mentors. The next and one of the most important things are these scenarios. People fail to care about these scenarios. I think they, they don't care enough. First one here, rookie quarterback one. I completed this yesterday to get an idea for what it would look like. So in my other franchise, when you complete this, I'll show you what it looks like first. You go through these scenarios. Great performance, show flashes, no expectations. Great performance obviously is going to be the one that offers you the highest XP and or stat boost. Now, one thing to note, some are XP, some are stats, some can offer you either one. So beat the Falcons and throw 300 yards to Bryce Young. Even if it takes you throwing five picks, like you want this, you want this. So when you complete this, you get it afterwards and offer. Would you rather take uh, attribute points or would you rather take XP? Always take the attribute points. So I completed that. It increased his deep accuracy by four XP points. That essentially is the equivalent of upgrading his deep throw, his uh, his strong arm, two to three times. Two to three times on Bryce Young at about 4K right now would be about 12K XP. So either they give you like that 3K XP or you get 12K worth of upgrades. If you have an attribute option, always take the attribute option. It is so important. You're pretty much skipping upgrades. Uh, another one, wide receiver tandem. I'm going to make a video going over all the scenarios at some point, but wide receiver tandem is when your second receiver gets like hyped up and you got to get 150 yards with him. Always complete that. When you complete those scenarios, you actually get a boost. Like I get deep route running plus five or at least plus five. A plus five boost could take a guy from an 85 to 87 and that jumps all of his buckets up. That, that skips three to four upgrades. That pretty much means you might only get three to five upgrades for a whole season for one guy if they have a good year. You pretty much advance an entire year's worth of release points and deep threat points. Make sure you are doing these scenarios. Another good one is there's a O-lineman one that says take sacks eventually you start to realize what points you get for every sack you take you decrease in the amount of xp you get if you take zero sacks last year you got 10k plus to your o-line that is huge that would be two to three upgrades for aquano or at least close to the third upgrade do not fall asleep on these scenarios they are so important there's so many of them uh the opening day keys is important if you go ahead and set your season goal and you shoot for playoffs here you click on that one and you know you're going to make playoffs or an 80s division if you shoot for playoffs you're going to get a bonus at the end of the year of 20 staff points. I know it doesn't sound like much now, but you increase that upon all the other game stuff. It's just free stuff. Make sure you're taking advantage. In preseason, there's a camp standout. Make sure you're doing that one. That one gives you attribute points, potentially XP, and it usually puts you on a path to get a superstar or star dev upgrade. There's just so many things that if, like I said, I was with users who did all this stuff properly. 
they got 95 plus overall teams the people who skipped over the stuff and just want to play the game had 88 overall teams this can give you this like i said the skill gap for builders it used to be the best people had the best teams and they won the most games now the best people still win a lot of games but the best builders the best people who put mine to the analytics of the game into the features are the ones who build the best and have a huge advantage. So make sure you're taking advantage of that. And of course, guys, another way to wait, another way to build is going to be awards. Weekly awards can sometimes grant random dev trade upgrades. They give you extra points. Winning awards is so important. Winning MVP, rookie of the year. Always make sure you're taking advantage of the award race. You're focusing on it. If you look here at awards, in season awards at some point after week eight you will see the yearly awards populate winning these are so important they result in dev trade upgrades which of course make your xp easier to gain but the most important thing is when you win an award usually you get a dev trade upgrade if it's your first time winning it and you get a huge xp boost winning rookie of the year is one of the best ways to put your guy on the fast track to none overall uh make sure you're tracking these because you might notice that come week come week 14 that receiver that you've been kind of sharing reps with is second in, in voting for rookie of the year you may want to pivot and just start spamming him because who cares about those other you know build that guy that has that has a chance at an award build him if your quarterback's third in mvp and you've been running a lot pivot start passing those awards are so important winning awards plays a big role picking your franchise team plays a big role when you're with a good league of people pick pick a pick a conference that's easier and a division that's easier because that's going to help you win awards and awards are one of the biggest things but that pretty much wraps up just about everything so we have training mini camps age and dev trait considerations awards and scenarios those are the biggest ways to develop players i pretty much gave you all the key tips and tricks to develop your players make sure you're following these if you do not follow these you're going to fall behind in team overall upgrades i hope this helps you guys out this year let me know down below what you knew about already what you learned i'd love to see how many of these other leagues like wow i didn't know that was even a thing could be self-explanatory might not be uh, let me know down below of course guys there's a few other there's also some like glitchy things like you know uh, changing positions and stuff like that i'm not going into all that stuff because that stuff kind of gets a little wishy-washy most leagues aren't going to allow a lot of that stuff so i wouldn't i wouldn't focus too much on that but anyways hope you guys enjoyed let me know if you have any other tips down below that people can see i'll pin the comment if we have another good uh good tip down below make sure to check out underdog down below in the description subscribe comment and give this video a huge thumbs up it helps out a lot thank you guys for watching i'm out peace